So quick introduction about myself. Uh, I am Parth. I am the co-founder of a supply chain security company called uh, Kusari. Uh, previously before that, I was in defense contracting, and I'm currently the maintainer on various open source projects, uh, which one of them is Guac, which we'll talk about today, which is gra uh, graph for understanding artifact composition. Uh, there's also Fresca, which is a factory for repeatable, secure creation of artifacts. It's a, it's a mouthful. Uh, in total attestations, and then in total Golang. And I'll hand it off to my co-speaker. Hey, uh, I'm Dan. I'm a software engineer with Red Hat, uh, and I've been for the past year or so working on, also on the software supply chain security topics. Uh, previously, I was active in, in, in all other different kind of communities, from messaging to edge computing, and yeah. So let's get started off. Hello? Is it not working? Hello? Oh, yes. Um, so you might have seen this slide in this room multiple times. So we'll do a quick background into what software supply chain security is. You know, there are many different aspects of it. There could be, you know, there's the source threats, there's build threats, and as well as the open source, you know, dependency threats. So this could be from a compromised source repo. Uh, this could be at the build level, right, where the, um, you could, the build process may be compromised, and at the, uh, at the package level, where the package repository or something malicious could happen at, that, at the end. And before it reaches a consumer, it may again be intercepted. So there's a lot of things that are in this space around software supply chain security. Uh, in this space, particularly in this, uh, in this pr uh, pr particular demo, we're going to talk about how, are we pull, how do we make sure that what we're pulling in is, is secure, and how do we make that decisions, all these policy decisions, automated. So we'll use tools like Walk, uh, we'll do trustification, and we'll go forward from there. So again, a little bit more background. Um, you, may, you may have heard of the word SBOM, Software Bill of Materials. Uh, there's also, right, uh, there's a lot of vulnerabilities out there. We all know about this. Uh, but you know, it can get overwhelming at times. There's so many, there's so much, uh, so many vulnerabilities out there. It, there's a lot of noise. So how do you know exactly what you need to focus on? So there's another term called VEX, which is the Vulnerability Exploitability Exchange. What this is, is that it allows the, uh, the pub publishers of the, their, the projects or artifacts to provide information about, hey, is there mitigations or is, you know, for example, is the uh, particularly vulnerable, uh, vulnerable uh, portion of the, the code not being called or is the feature being disabled, for example, that, that could not affect the, so it means basically you're not affected by the vulnerability. So there's multiple stages for it. So there are multiple statuses, right? So there is, you're known you are affected, uh, you're not affected, you're either you're fixed or you're under investigation. And all this can change, right? So if you're under investigation one day, you may, may come out to be affected, or the next day you may, be, may come out to be, oh, you're not affected because you did more investigation into it. You know, they're either from the call stack you're not gonna get, you're, you're not reaching the vulnerable code, or the feature is disabled, so you're no longer vulnerable. Um, so from this, we can filter out the noise and get to you know the two critical vulnerabilities that you actually care about. But as with all, as with the space, there is a lot of there's a lot of information out there. You know, there's S bombs, you know, VEX that we talked about earlier, uh, CVE data. There's build attestations like Salsa. Uh, there's you know all this information coming in, and it's all you know all over the place. There's nothing you know putting the pieces together. So the whole, so what we're trying to provide is like, can we, can Guac and other tools such as uh, Trustification, uh, can we take all this information, put it into, uh, can we, com you know, combine the puzzles pieces together so that it makes it a lot easier for people to understand, you know, what is happening, and can they use this data to make proactive decisions about, well, you know, should I be using this software? Can I be running this in production? Can we use this data to, you know, uh, make uh, automated decisions? So there are multiple layers, and again, you may, may have seen this slide, but there's multiple layers. Um, you know, at the bottom, there's the trust foundation, right? This is your signatures, uh, your identities, and so forth. The layer above that is all these attestations, right? These could be SBOMs, these could be uh, SALSA attestations, which is your build provenance, your VEX, your uh, vulnerability data, all this kind of stuff, right? It's all living there. Again, like I was saying before, all this data is very spread out, scattered. How do you make sense of this information? How do you put it all together and use it for, for policy or you know, for other insights. So that's where Guac would come into play. So Guac uh, takes all this information and aggregates it all together so that you can use this to use it you know, for automated policy decisions. So for example, you can use it for OPA Gatekeeper like we'll show today. 
So more under, a quick background in what Guac is. So you can see from this diagram, Guac is a graph database. So what it does uh, internally is a graph database, and it takes in inputs from various different sources. So you can ingest SBOMs. You can ingest information like scorecard uh, uh, in total ad stations. So like this is like salsa information and so forth. It also takes in, uh, it, it, it's a living graph. So basically, it tries to find more information that it can. So it pulls in threat information from OSV. Um, and it can also pulls in more information about your specific tr uh, dependencies and projects via depths.dev. So all this information gets combined, um, and you can use this to, again, you can use all this information to you, for policy checks, for patch planning, or you know, to understand what's critical in your infrastructure. Um, and it's a very pluggable system, so you know, these are the things that we started out with. And then we want to go forward. You know, if there are more pieces that you want, pieces that you need to, uh, to understand the, the environment, you can always add more and more integrations into it. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> at Red Hat we, we started also a project called Trustification uh, and and uh, use use Guac for for ingesting and and, and making a, a graph representation of all, all the relations, as, as part says, between the S bombs uh, packages within the S bombs vulnerabilities, uh, VEX files, and, 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 and all other stuff. But we wanted to provide also a couple more uh, services, so to say, on, on, on top of it, right? Uh, so, so we wanted to, to be able to, to uh, provide a little bit more met metadata about all these files, so not, not just relations, but, but al also make things uh, full text searchable. For example, you, 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 that you can, you know, uh, a search for, for a, you know, a log for shell, and, and, and you get a, a appropriate CVs, uh, and uh, provide a way to, to, to ingest uh, VEX files uh, from, from the uh, CSF uh, compliant repositories, so that you can always uh, ingest uh, a new uh, uh, diffs of, of, of new files that, that are coming in, in, in the repository store everything in, in the uh, S3 compatible storage so, so that uh, all the files can be later do downloadable. Uh, now the GWAC provides uh, also the, uh, the, the blob storage, so, so that's, that's doable from the, from the GWAC itself, but when we started, uh, that's something that, that we did on, on our own. And as, as you can see on, on the top uh, and on the, on the bottom, we want to provide a, a, a good UI uh, to actually, uh, for people to be able to, as I said, uh, search, get get all the information ab about S bombs, about packages, about vulnerabilities uh, affected uh, different S bombs and packages, but also provide the API that we can uh, integrate this data with, with with further system. For for example, like a VS Code extension or or or, or CI/CD tools. Uh, so. Now that we, you know, have basic graphs of what WAC is and, and, and what trustification is, so, so the question is, how do we use this information now in the in the in the Kubernetes land, for example, right? And for that, we 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 created a, a little demo. So let's start from, from the like uh, first principles. So first of all, we, we have a, like a OPA, right? So Open Policy Agent, which is like a, a general purpose policy agent, which allows us to separate our services for. for from defining and, and executing our, our, our policy decisions, right? So, in a normal normal situation, you will you will define your policy in a in a regular language defined by, by by the OPA, and and the OPA will have some data to work on. So, your service will basically query uh, OPA with with some uh, input data, usually in, in like a JSON uh, formatted file. OPA will will execute. The policy with input data, with uh, the data it has, and and make a decision and return that decision back uh, back to the service, right? So uh, another sub project of OPA is called Gatekeeper, which basically allows us to to implement these kind of uh, policies on a on a on our resources in, inside of the Kubernetes cluster, right? So uh, we can uh, Gatekeeper defines an uh, administration. Uh, uh, webhook that will be executed each time that we try to deploy a certain re resource in, in, inside of the cluster, right? So, so that webhook, in this case, in, in, in Gatekeeper case, will will query OPA with with, with the uh, actual resource in in, in, in case and and uh, try to figure out if if we are allowed or not to to actually de deploy that. Uh, that resource based on, on on the on the on the policy policy that that we. Uh, defined, right? 
So there are two kind of, uh, so, so how did then all, you know, work together? So the last missing part in all this is the external data provider. So, so as, we, as we said previously, OPA needs some kind of data in, 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 or in order to, to make a policy decision, and that data can be defined within the OPA, or, or it can use an external data provider to actually call external service and, 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 and make a decision, right? So for this uh, demo, we, we implemented basically the GUAC data provider that, that will uh, call GUAC over the REST API, uh, and, and, and get the data. So the whole flow will be, we try to deploy deployment or, or a pod. Uh, it, it will go through OPA, uh, through, through the gatekeeper to OPA, to our, our data provider. We will basically extract the, the digest of, of the container we try to deploy, and we query GWOC with that digest, try to figure out, do we know anything about this container? Is there any uh, salsa attached to this container? Uh, are there any vulnerabilities that we know of? And if anything of those security meta metadata is not okay with the container, we will deny basically the deployment of, of, uh, of it in, in, in the cluster. This is a little bit how, how things look like. So, so there's a two, thing, two things in, in, uh, in, in Gatekeeper to, to be aware about. First is the template. And this is where we actually provide the, the rego, uh, rego spec of, 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 our, of our policy. And as, as you can see here, we, here we, we take the image from the, from the, from the input object that, 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 that we are getting from, from, the, from the resource and, and the administration webhook. And we call the external provider, in this case, Quack, uh, to, to, to tell us more about to, to tell us more about this image. And if we have anything in the response, we said, okay, this, is, this image will be blocked due, due to uh, the GWAC policy uh, violation. Then on, based on the template, we create actual constraint and say, okay, uh, uh, you know, apply this template uh, to, to the namespace test and, and uh, you know, define, uh, apply it to all the, all the uh, deployments that we try to deploy. Into, into the in, into the a proper in, into a, a, a test namespace, and down below you you can see basically how would would look uh, if you try to 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 actually uh, apply uh, or deploy uh, the image with uh, with some vulnerabilities found in as we'll part dem demonstrate now. Okay, so let's let's talk about the actual let's you know let's do a demonstration of this. So um, you can see deployed in my Kubernetes cluster. So I have Kine running locally, and you can see I have uh, the top two things up there. Uh, if that's a little bit too small, I can make it a little bit bigger. But I have the GraphQL server and the REST API piece. So that is those are the two Guac components that are running. Um, so and then below that you can see Gatekeeper is running, and then so we'll start from forward from there. So in the meantime, what I did is because for the demo purposes, I, I already ingested uh, SBOM data, ingested some salsa, um, you know, vulnerability data, all that kind of stuff gets automatically, uh, uh, as part of the graph database, is automatically updating. So as new, new vulnerabilities come out, it's a living graph, like I was saying before. So as new vulnerabilities come out, it's automatically, you know, updating the package information and, and, uh, and it's creating a, what's known as a certified vulnerability no, uh, node within, you know, attached to that package. So now I know that package is vulnerable, and then based off that, I can find out exactly what depend on that package. So before I go forward, I kind of want to show off exactly what this kind of looks like. So if I look at the, uh, all this information is exposed via a, a GraphQL API also, along with the REST API. So starting off, you know, just to show off, like you can see there is already a bunch of data in here. So for example, uh, console, the specific version of console ha does have a vulnerability, and you can see the vulnerability ID, ID specified here. And if I keep going scrolling down, more and more packages are, are you can see that they have, in this case, this Debian package, um, you know, has another vulnerability. So this is kind of showing off like that decomposing of information, right? So uh, it's not just about the SBOM, it's about taking this information from the SBOM, decomposing it into, into individual components, into packages and, and relationships. So this allows us to 
right? Understand the view of the world, basically. What is your, what does your software environment look like? So you know you're not scanning in the, the normal sense anymore because now you understand how all these how all the packages are related to each other. So if one package gets a, a vulnerability, now you can automatically know that hey, this one package, uh, you know, my project depends on that package. So I, I know that it, that it contains a critical vulnerability without me even scanning it anymore. Um, on other pieces uh, here, you can see that I, I have ingested the SBOM, so this is basically showing off like for my spe this specific demo image that I created. Um, you know, I have a specific, uh, you can see where it came from, what the, you know, the namespace, this is a Cyclone DX image, uh, and then you know, where, it, where is the actual location. So if I ever wanted to go back to the actual SBOM itself, um, and I can like, go retrieve it. Uh, it also shows me exactly what dependencies came from that specific SBOM. So you can see included dependencies and all the different relationships that came from it. Salsa is the, you know, the build provenance Salsa. Again, it's just kind of showing off for my specific subject, which has this specific uh, digest. Um, this, you know, where did it come from? It was built by uh, uh, KRL, and then, you know, what the build type was, where was it built, and, and more information about the builder and so forth. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to show off is, you know, there was, um, you know, a lot, a lot of times, you know, there's zero days. Uh, there's places where, um, you know, before a vulnerability comes out, a maintainer might come out, you know, beforehand, a couple weeks before, saying like, hey, there is a, you know, there's a bug or there's a vulnerability in, in, you know, a package that you're using, for example, maybe curl. And how do you know, you know, like, you know, you've been warned, but, you know, the, one, the all the database, the vulnerability databases haven't been updated yet. So how do you respond to this? So can you be proactive about it? So there's a thing called certified bad in the open source uh, Quark, which basically, so in this case, I'm marking, you know, as an example, I'm marking Alpine base layout as a, as a vulnerability reported by the maintainer. So I want this to be blocked by OPA. So it's not just about, it's not just about vulnerabilities. I want, you know, if there's policies or if there's, you know, company policies or something else you want to, that need to be blocked, you can, you can uh, set that up. Along with licenses and if there's specific licenses that shouldn't be used, you know, we can be, you can use that as a policy, uh, you can use that as a gate mechanism for your policy. So going back here. So, as you can see, um, you know we have Gatekeeper running, we have uh, Guac running. So next thing we need is that uh, Guac provider, which is that that connection between uh, between Guac uh, and Gatekeeper. So that's that's the thing that allow us uh, allows us uh, allows Gatekeeper to query Guac via the REST API, pull the information about you know of, uh, a specific image, and then make a policy decision based off of it. So I'm going to do a quick uh, Helm install here. Also, I'm cancel this out. So I'm going to install. So I'm going to install the Guac provider, and if I do, a, oops, uh, that's a. You can see, yep, oh, good. You can see that uh, now it's running uh, right here. So it's a very small. It's a very small image. Um, all basically, it's it's a you know an interface between Guac and, and Gatekeeper. The next piece I wanted to show off is like just to, uh, I'm going to get the, the logs running uh, for my Guac provider, so this way I can I can see exactly what what's causing the policy violation um, and what's what's being what's uh, what's causing it to be blocked. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a couple of examples. So the first example I'm going to show off is uh, is going to be a vulnerable image that I showed off and and what happened and it created it. Of course the. Oh, I did not do the constraint. That's right. <laughs> Let me delete this. Uh, the constraint file is that Dijon talked about. But this about. is the good show that how things work when <laughs> the provider is not working, right? <laughs> yeah, so it got created because the constraint files weren't there. So next thing I need to do is the two constraints, you know, the template file as well as the constraints, constraints file that uh, Dijon just showed off, you know, the Rego policy as well as, you know, I want to be any deployment that's running in the test namespace, I want to, it has to be blocked, uh, it has to be checked against policy. So now I can, you know, run this, run my vulnerable image now. Oops. See that? Run this, and we should see, uh, come back over here, and of course, something goes wrong. <laughs> um, it, of course, the demos, oh, uh, <laughs> demo gods always strike. But you can see in here, the. Uh, it did find the policy itself, uh, so it, you know, Guac came back and it did say that you know there's specific vulnerabilities that are in place. 
um, you know, that, that are blocking this from running. And one of the things that Quark does also behind the scenes is that it's actually validating if there's a VEX, that vulnerability, exploitability exchange that I was speaking about earlier. So if there is a, if there is VEX associated with the actual um, project, and if the specific some of these vulnerabilities may be you know mitigated based off that you know not affected, then I can uh, you know then th this will automatically um, um, be allowed to run because it's not it's no longer affected. So I don't understand why I did that. <laughs> huh? So I'm going to kill the kill the provider. I'm going to bring it back up again. Bear with me for a second. All right. And I'm going to reinstall the provider. Of course, uh, there we go. Yeah, the policy should already be in place, so we should be good. And the provider is running again. Perfect. So I'm going to go back up and. Grab this, check logs again, and then yeah, we can run more, oops, uh, we can run more examples. So the next one I want to run is, you know, this is the one we certified bad, for example. You know, it doesn't contain any vulnerabilities, um, but, you know, right, right away it got denied uh, because it got blocked, that specific, you know, image got blocked, and we can go check the logs out. And in this case, right, we, we, we did that certify bad. Uh, if, you, if you remember in the GraphQL, we certified a specific, uh, specific you know, Alpine-based layout as bad because, you know, for example, the maintainer came out and said it was a, there was a critical vulnerability coming out for it, but the actual vulnerability database hasn't been updated yet. Uh, another example is, like, let's say for compliance reasons, hey, you need SBOMs for everything you're deploying, right? So then in this case, this is being blocked because the SBOM is not found for that particular image. Similarly, you know, it could be requiring, you know, as a, as a company policy, you may, you may be requiring uh, Salsa uh, to be uh, required for all the things. Again, we, we get blocked, and we can come back here and say, okay, Salsa is not found for this particular uh, Alpine image based on this digest. And then, of course, lastly, I want just to show off a good example, you know, that's passing all the policies. Uh, we do this good one, and you can see got, it got created, and we can go back to our thing. We can see, like, yes, it got guac it's verified because it passed all the checks that we wanted to check, right? So we it has to have no. It, we, I wanted no vulnerabilities. Um, I wanted a, a S bomb, a SALSA attestation, and, and ensure that there was no certify bad. So what the certify like vulnerabilities is? You know, it's not just direct direct uh, direct dependencies. It's also you know a, any transitor dependencies. They may have vulnerabilities. It's catching all that kind of stuff. Similarly for certify bad, so it's not just like, is there a direct dependency on the Alpine base layout, for example, or is there a transitor dependency? If there is, then I want to block my image from running. So it's, it's doing, a, a, it's doing a, 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 a transitive scan through the entire system. Go back to here. Yeah, cool. So you just saw where we are today, right? And and uh, uh, <clears throat> I think w w uh, where the whole ecosystem is. I, I'm glad I, I was at a couple of sessions today talking about uh, the sessions and, and uh, S bombs and, and all the supply chain security. And I'm very, very very glad that the conclusions are the same as as what has been ours in in, in Red Hat in in the, in the last years or so. So we're st still super early in, in the process. So. Most people are, are not even producing any SBOMs. If they are producing, they are only producing it for, for compliance reasons. And all the tools that, that are used to actually analyze and store the SBOMs are in, in, in the early stages of development as, 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 as the project that, that, that we show you today. But, but also, uh, you can see that there's a, there's a lot of uh, inconsistency uh, inconsistency in in the data being produced, e even by the the companies that that, 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 that should sh should know better, right? And and I heard that at, at, at the panel uh, at two o'clock at two o'clock today. So so like a lot of S bombs are not even spec compliant, uh, and not to talk about se semantic uh, se semantic uh, uh, validity of, of of the data of of of, of those things, right? Another big problem that, that we also experienced is that. Uh, uh, People can't agree on the on the identifiers for our components still, 
right? So purals are, are, are used in, in Guac and, and used in, in the open source world uh, very much. This is cool, but there's still uh, uh, CPs, there's the omnibores, there's, there's uh, hashes, so, so, so there's a, like a internal company kind of standards that, that people use, so that makes things very hard to cor correlate. If, if you want to go like, okay, this is the product, this is the package, this is the vulnerability, how we all, all tie that together in, in a graph that we can actually query later on and, and, and show the data. So you being here on, on Friday at five o'clock means that you're interested in, in, in the topic, so which is good. And what I want to say is that it's really, really early days, so and there's a lot of work to be done, so, so please join all, all the initiatives, right? In my perspective, is uh, that all these uh, uh, all these initiatives that we are doing should be eventually become invisible to developers, like, like we want to do Kubernetes, make Kubernetes invisible to developers, right? So it should be integrated in in, in all our uh, CI/CD tools or IDs or or, or 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 things like that. So so it should be something that that we don't think that much about in terms of the inf infrastructure sh should should become our, our sec second nature. And uh, as you said, like dependency uh, managing and, and dependency bridges are, are just one uh, part of it. There's a lot of other things and, and uh, OpenSSF and, and uh, CNCF tech, tech securities are, are, I think, a very good place to start this if, if you're interested in, in, uh, in, in, in the whole topic and, and all, all the other projects that are uh, that, that, are, that are related to, uh, to software supply chain security. Yeah, yeah and then uh, Guac actually just became an incubating project within the OpenSSF. Um, and you know, the demo just we showed off today is also, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's out there in GitHub. It's still a work in progress. You know, we want to clean it up a little bit, but we definitely want to provide that as a, another, um, you know, a, a demo basically of how, you know, Guac data and how to, how to take all this information, SBOMs and Salsa and VEX and all this kind of stuff and make it usable, right? I think the question asked regularly is, I'm generating SBOMs, what do I do with them? And you know, the answer is, you know, use tools like Guac and uh, Trustification. So uh, because it's part of the OpenSSF, right, we have a monthly call. So if you're, if you're interested in uh, joining up with the community, you know, working on this problem, like Dijan was saying, there's a lot of challenges to be solved. So uh, we have a monthly community call. Um, you know, we have an op we're on the OpenSSF Slack uh, on the Guac channel. Um, there's a, this, the, the QR code will actually lead you to the guac.sh website. And there, you know, we have documentation there. We have demos there. And yeah, if there's new features, new use cases that you would like to see, like to work on, you know, we're happy to chat and you know, happy to work together. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any questions we can answer? We can go back. Please use the mic for the yeah for the streams. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Hi, thank you for this uh, presentation. It's Friday afternoon, so I will probably need to check it again to understand everything. But my, my question is, uh, would it be, uh, uh, you're using uh, OPA Gatekeeper. Uh, if we switch OPA Gatekeeper with Kyverno, uh, would this still make sense? Uh, what should we do to work, to work with Kyverno instead of OPA Gatekeeper? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we you know we chose OPA um, as a starting point, but because there's a there's a REST API basically, right? So Guac provides a REST API. So um, this can this can also integrate with the Kubernetes. No, so it's not it's not like uh, admission controller specific. Um, you know, we started out with OPA, but you know we want, we do want to work with uh, Kubernetes no and and any other, you know any other kind of tools that you would like to work with. Because the REST API, right, you get the information back as you need, and whichever format Kubernetes needs it in, and you can use that as, as a uh, decision maker. Yeah, there's just need to be integration implemented, yeah. But not, nothing systemat systematically that would prevent you to do that, yeah. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, you all for coming, and uh, yeah, we hope to see you in the upstream communities, right? Awesome. Thank you so much.